anything else. Fucking tannins do a number on you. Yeah. Anyways. <laughs> Welcome back to the death of the alcoholism podcast. <laughs> if you didn't know this, Joshua and Jason have a history of drinking. I've been drinking things since I was born. <laughs> maybe, maybe I was drinking things in the womb. I believe I started with water, but it might have been milk. And then I progressed to other f- drinks. Coffee, soda, juice, chicken. Fascinating. Do go on. <laughs> <laughs> I just pictured this like this like audiobook of your life your bio, your autobiography audiobook and you're just like let's start from the beginning I've always consumed liquids milk water coffee orange juice and just like then it then it cuts it's like 7 hours later soju jack daniels <laughs> Coke Zero. <laughs> it's amazing I had time to do anything else. <laughs> now let's move on to all the foods I've eaten in my life. <laughs> <laughs> you giving me an idea of doing an autobiography. <laughs> These things I consume. Jason Newland by story. <laughs> He walked out in the gray light and stood and he saw for a brief moment the absolute truth of the world. The cold relentless circling of the intestate earth. Darkness implacable. The blind dogs of the sun in their running. The crushing black vacuum of the universe. And somewhere 200 animals trembling like ground foxes in their cover. Borrowed time and borrowed world and borrowed eyes with which to sorrow it. And lo, for the earth was empty of form, and void, and darkness was all over the face of the deep, and we said, look at that fucker dance. Welcome to Heat Death of the Universe. Will I ever not chuckle when I do this? We'll Probably see. <laughs> um, today, the date is actually meaningful today. Or is it? I don't know. We'll philosophize about that later. No, we won't. It's the great refresh. <laughs> it is. It um, happens once a year. All the bad shit's refreshed, and it's all good again. It is uh, January 1st, 2021. Everything feels different. COVID is gone. Um. <laughs> the, the BSOD is at least 364 days away. Mitch McConnell has Venmoed me, my two grand personally. Um Actually, in in real reality, Jason, you had some good news on on mon- on the money front from yeah, from the government. I, I got my six hundred dollar check basically the day after I got my twelve hundred dollar check <laughs> from nine months ago. From That's so ago. weird. <laughs> I think you're right. I think they are just literally like they're just going backwards to where they so, en- that ended up. Like bad news to you if you were one of the first people to get the twelve hundred dollar check because it really looks like we're getting the six hundred dollar checks first. I was one of the last people. I had to be one of the last people. I was more in the middle. I was like in the middle. I don't remember exactly because COVID time completely has fucked my my sense of time. Still March. You sometimes think it's still March. 
I've had a really weird year. I I know what you mean by. I think we all have, COVID but yeah, fucking with your sense of time. It really, really has. Like, I was talking about that last night uh, with Tommy, with a friend of the show, Tommy. I don't know why I had Thomas to say Powell. his name. Eh, it's, He's you know, a nice guy. Plug. <laughs> Sometimes, sometimes the last thing I remember doing pre-COVID world was hanging out with you and Tommy at a Jude's bar, which seems like it was in March, a very long time ago. I've done stuff since then, <laughs> but that was the last time I remember hanging out with people without thinking about coronavirus as a thing. Yeah, that's true. As like a reason to like, maybe I shouldn't be doing To this. constantly have this like... Guilt. Ambient uh, anxiety in the air, even if you're not totally conscious of it. But so, yeah, it's a new year. Who gives a shit? Well, it's that time of year where people do retrospectives. We look back upon the year, and we are going to do a little of that. And what we've decided to do for your listening treat, I don't even think our editor knows about this yet we've decided in the episode here and we're going to cut together an edit of the best clips from all of our episodes <laughs> and then we will come back at the very last five minutes to wrap up this episode with some recommendations <laughs> and we'll we'll sing uh christmas carols as the last five minutes um None of that's gonna happen. Although Shit. that would be really funny. Just pick the <laughs> pick the worst moments of everything everything we've recorded. <laughs> anyway, um, now our little twist on this is gonna be like to sort of compare and contrast the year twenty twenty, which is you know kind of universally being called like. A shit year, the worst year in uh, people's lifetimes, and that's that's fair enough. I think it's the at the very least the weirdest year of my life um, so far. I think twenty twenty one might be even weirder somehow. But um, any case, like yeah, we picked out a few like moments in history, and we're going to kind of go like gradually further and further back into like the recesses of, uh, of history (laughs) and, uh, see what things were like in some, um, famously bad times in the past and, uh, see how it's, see how it all stacks up. I've already, I think I've already kind of got a working title for the episode, the, uh, the 2020 human misery Olympics. (laughs) I think that works. That's a good one. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Um, (laughs) So that's kind of what this is going to be. But I guess before we before we jump in the uh the DeLorean and whatnot, um I didn't even really think about this. I mean, we've been talking about the year 2020 a fair amount like we should We've been talking about it all year, haven't we? Yeah, so I don't think there's any point Wait. <laughs> Not true. Our podcast started in August, but it feels like we it has been um, well, most podcasts only do like fifty episodes in a year, and we're we're almost there. That's true. We are we're doubling down on that. Um, my point is, is that I think we can kind of like we kind of like uh, briskly uh, summarize the this year. So, I mean, how did things start, start last thinking. January? Or whenever, you know. I mean, I guess we should start at the beginning, right? Last January. So I think, like, the fr- I mean, obviously this is mostly just going to be about COVID and the development of shit that happened with COVID. And, um, which is why I think, which is why we wanted to, to branch out and talk about these other times in history. Because... For God's sakes, we talk about COVID so much on this podcast, and if we were to just focus, do a deep dive on this past year, it would just be more of that talk, and I'm, Sick it's wearing it. me down. So, and it's feeling a bit wary. Um, I lost something. 
I lost all the podcast. Give me a moment. Let's keep going. Keep talking. I'm I'm just fucking Well, so let's say <laughs> in January and February, I think it's safe to say essentially no one in the United States took COVID seriously. Um despite um, you know, our our top tier political leaders, our royalty, um all getting like debriefed on it and you're forgetting the biggest thing for January. What? The greatest achievement that the neo libs have ever accomplished. Oh, I'm trying to impeach Trump. They took him to trial, man. <laughs> and they failed mis- miserably. Hey, they got him there. <laughs> they impeached him. <laughs> January 16th, impeachment trial of Donald Trump. They did it. But they didn't. <laughs> they did it. They ate the Cheeto. <laughs> he fucking, like, he kind of humiliated. I mean, it was just such a dumb stunt, but whatever. Um, then, 14 days later, in retribution, January 30th, was the day... COVID-19 was released to the world. Huh? January 30th, COVID-19 pandemic. No, oh, it was it was it was declared a pandemic officially by like the World Health Organization or something. Yeah, they basically uh it has it, it was not actually declared a pandemic at that point. Yeah, I don't think it was that but early. But it was uh declared to be an outbreak of public health emergency and one of international concern. It was the sixth time sixth time this measure had been invoked since 2009. Some of the others were like MERS or SARS. Yeah. And uh, I think because of those others, we were like, hey, this one won't be that bad. The others went away pretty fast. But we were wrong, apparently. Yeah. and But the thing is, is... um. Average citizens being wrong is one thing, but like people with access to like power, top tier scientists who are telling them like this is going to be a big fucking problem. And yes, Trump famously is like on, you know, there's a recording of him saying um, he knew it was terrible and decided to basically do nothing about it and to downplay it. But as if, what I do when I dislike my order from McDonald's too. <laughs> and um like we've talked about, like at the very least half of the governors in the country, including in like the most populous um states, like California and New York, um, were also briefed the same way Trump was and didn't do a goddamn thing about it. Said it's not a big deal. Everybody chill out. To go out, go out shopping. They basically did a George W. Bush. They were like, you know, Bush is famous. Like <laughs> after nine eleven, just go out shop and shop till you drop. Like that's the solution. Um, it's so disgusting. But um, yeah, I don't know. I mean. Do you have like like a timeline of the year in front of you? Do you want to just like kind of go through it? Because through, through the whole year. Well, I mean, like oh. anything, anything even remotely like notable. But like, I have a feeling it's just going to be mostly dominated by. Oh yeah, most of this, to no one's surprise, most of this year is uh, coronavirus. There are some big things well, that happen in the year. But... Yeah, so I was going to say like, okay. Um, the Black Lives Matter um, protests were huge, obviously. Um, I mean, the I biggest feel, I, thing might have been when Luxembourg became the first country in the world to make all public transport free to use. <laughs> How could I have forgotten that? Um, oh, you've got a, you've got a good like international timeline there. This isn't U.S. centric. Can't forget the uh, the 2020 stock market crash, which um, was a really big crash. Uh, 
the February 27th one. There's a bigger one coming later in the year. I think we actually broke the record for 1929 at some point this year. Really? Okay. Impressive. I didn't know that. But the economy's been also doing so well. It's been rubber banding back and forth. It's been working for everybody. We're it's all like, we're all collecting massive returns on the on the fucking stock market. Um, often when I look at the stock market or think about the economy, I think maybe if I just do what Darren Aronofsky taught me to do in high school and drill a hole into my head, I'll also understand <laughs> the stock market. I was just thinking about Pi earlier today. That's a gr- fucking great movie. I think it is. I haven't seen it since I, I fucking loved it when I was like 16 or 17, which is the last time I watched it, which I'm pretty old. So it's been a while. It ho- it holds up. I saw it kind of somewhat recently. Um, I think it holds up. Yeah, I feel like it would. I feel like it might even be better now that I'm um, an adult. <laughs> I'm, I think I might have liked it better too, actually, um, in my most recent rewatch. But um. Um, what was I going to say? I mean, I feel like if we wanted to summarize this year more quickly, because I would like to just kind of move on to this other historical stuff, but like, you know, there was like this social strife, um, and, you know, totally righteous protests, um, (laughs) even the ones that like lit a fucking uh, uh, car dealership on fire in in Wisconsin. So Um, here's my timeline. I just want to throw this out here. My coronavirus take is January to March, the United States of America went, whoa, 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 China, China, what are you doing over there? Stop that, China, stop that. And then they're like, hey, hold our beer. And they just took the fucking lead of just being like, no, no, we, we will show you, we will show you how to catch viruses. We will show you, you don't know a thing about how to, how to make sure everyone gets it. We got to catch them all. And then America did. They, they caught all. Got to catch them all. America takes on COVID like a fucking Pokemon quest. That's all I know. All the strands. (laughs) Jesus, it's like kind of true, actually. Like, yeah, it is that whole USA. I mean, it was in March that we surpassed basically two months. It took America two months to surpass every country in like in raw numbers. In raw numbers, yeah. Yeah, and then things basically wound down in that amount of time in China, if I'm remembering correctly. Um, Yeah, it's been quiet over here in East Asia to some degree. I mean, until now. Um, so, I mean, then of guess, I guess, of course, the other big thing, and I mean, this is pretty U.S. centric here. I mean, whatever, um, was the fucking stupid sham of an election. Um, we chose the wrong guy. Very much so. Um, but, we you know, we've, we've gone over this so many times. There's no we, sense in really rehashing it. We could have had that it. handsome motherfucker from Texas who was in the emo band. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good bait and switch, man. <laughs> we chose the wrong guy. Where the fuck is Beto over our cat? I mean, he, Beto just seems like someone that I've probably <laughs> drank with in my life. It was like, didn't hate, but also didn't like, but. You know, we were at university at the same time, and I was like, oh, hey. He's like a... You're drunk, I'm drunk too, cool. He's not... You're into politics? Why don't we not talk about that? (laughs) He's not like a fail son. It's more like he's a fail husband, if that makes sense. Doesn't he, like... I mean, that's the big reason I've never gotten married. But he he married into, like, a huge amount of wealth, kind of the way that, like, um, John Kerry did with the the ketchup lady. (laughs) I'm giving the podcast too much information about myself, but that used to be a dream of mine, to marry into a large sum of wealth. Maybe that's a dream of a lot of people. Fuck yeah. I mean, why not? I mean, I wouldn't, like, I wouldn't, like, make it the single-minded goal, like... Like, yeah, I haven't made it a single But if it goal. but if it came up, I would be like, "This is great." <laughs> I wouldn't it wouldn't be like, "No, I don't, I don't, I, this is a turn off." <laughs> like this relationship's not going to work. <laughs> like I thought this was good, but then we were taking your private airplane to trips, <laughs> and you were demanding me to take flight lessons, and you know I don't like studying. 
<laughs> Even if it is to fulfill a lifelong dream to fly a plane. <laughs> Stop making me study. I just want to fly the airplane. <laughs> um, let's, I mean, what can you think of anything else in 2020? I mean, of course, stuff, other stuff happened, but like, I mean, we're going to keep coming, coming, kind of coming back to it anyway as like a comparing contrasting thing yeah um, i mean other than coronavirus there was a lot of um a lot of random just civil wars all over the place i mean the yeah, the global scale is like i mean we'll we'd, we'd be doing like a seven hour episode i was kind of i guess focused on the united not states talking to me for seven hours I have you on tape saying I don't want to do this thing all night. <laughs> don't give me that shit. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was at least ten minutes ago. <laughs> um so let's let's hop in the DeLorean. Um so I went back to get the TARDIS. <laughs> I went back is that a Doctor Who thing? The uh the telephone booth, the TARDIS. Okay. That's what he uses to travel through time. Very I remember cool. one of my favorite t-shirts. I really wish I knew what happened to this t-shirt. It was a picture of the DeLorean crashing into the TARDIS. Nice. Somewhere in the time stream. <sighs> that does sound like a very hip and very nerdy <laughs> t-shirt. So, I mean, I was thinking of bad times <laughs> in American history, of which there are many. I just, I zoomed back to um, the worst year of the Great Depression, which it seems by like any objective account was 1933. Um, It was when, uh, I guess the first wave of the Dust Bowl was starting, which was a very terrible time to live in, uh, well, time and place to live in. Um, I believe it was the highest unemployment rate it, well, it, for sure, in the 20th century, maybe all of American history. I'm not quite sure about that, but it was at 25%. Um, just mass homelessness. I mean, most people know what the Great Depression was like, but it's worth sort of noting again. Um, it's only... Um, sorry, I was just thinking 1933. Terrible. <laughs> what? I was just thinking of um No, I'm sorry, I just couldn't hear what you said. I was thinking of this uh Dust Bowl like short stories that was, I can't remember the uh artic the uh, authors' names with just like all these like, Steinbeck? Maybe well Steinbeck's I love Steinbeck. That's not who I was thinking of. I'll think of it later. It's not even important. But I was thinking that like also this is when the uh right before World War Two, which you have in the notes about Hitler taking power. But it was also wanting to take us back in time to when the New York Times wrote their famous article called Hitler Tamed by Prison, where they go into all the like uh, nuances of how after the radical Hitler went to prison that he wouldn't be a problem for the world anymore. <laughs> he, came, he came out more vengeful. He had written Mein Kampf there. Yeah, good, good one. What was it, New York Times? Yeah, New York Times. Yeah. I mean, he was um, Times Man of the Year or whatever, very kind of famously. Um, I, I never... I, you didn't know that? No. Here, I'll Alpha. show you what I'm talking about. It's always... It's always think of this one. Yeah. Ni- as, as close as 1938, Adolf Hitler, Man of the Year, or Person of the Year... Um, in 38? Yeah. Hey, you know who else they named Man of the Year? Joe Biden. The Biden, Biden-Harris Biden uh, fusion dance. Why was Trump never named? <laughs> <laughs> he might have been. I don't know. Um, Why do we even have a Man of the Year? Yeah. The best thing that ever came out of that was that funny gag in um, The Big Lebowski where there's the mirror. You know what I'm talking about? I do. Yeah. 
Um, so yes, 1933. Uh, I mean. In America, things were probably like economically as bad as they've been in maybe ever. Um, as they've always bread been. lines, you know, shanty towns, all of that stuff. And like we kind of just like sweep by it as like, a, oh, that was just this like moment in history. But that was like real intense suffering for people and. There wasn't a pandemic raging at the same time, but still, I think it it competes quite quite well with twenty twenty. Um, although there, and then you know we have to note some of the similarities. I mean, like a lot of people are losing their housing. You know, um, I I mean, what do you give it like? Six months before there's like huge shanty towns. I don't know. Are you sure there's not already huge shanty towns? There might be. I just don't know. I mean, I did a bunch of research, but I guess I didn't dive super deep into there. each thing. Huh? Oh, your voice just came out and really garbled on my side for a minute. Oh. I'm not sure why. You sound good now, but for a second there, you were like, um, I think it's just the Zoom thing. So sneaky it- robot to me. <laughs> It's probably just the internet connection Zoom thing, because um, it sounded okay. fine on my end, like on the through the through the uh, mixing board. I remember now. Well, the shanty town thing. I think there are already like I mean, in the places that can afford them, there are shanty towns. I think a lot of places you just end up with like homeless people, and then if you like have the uh, maybe you have like homeless centers, but um, oh yeah. yeah. America's creening towards that real fast. Yeah, yeah. Actually, you're right because I've heard reports of like, um, even in like, you know, well-to-do like uh, the like the Bay Area, which is not all well-to-do, of course, but you know what I mean. Like San Francisco is like a it's an expensive place to live, but yeah, yeah. they're like, um, they're just groups of people like just camping under like the like highway overpasses and stuff now like all around the country yeah that's that's the thing is people also just get kicked out of anywhere they're trying to like that's so disgusting when you see those those things in um major cities where they put like spikes on like the ground so like people can't sleep there on benches and on benches and stuff it's so fucked up yeah no i think it's super fucked up um, Especially when, like, so, just today I was talking to a friend on the internet who lives in the Bay Area, and they were talking about, like, rent compared to, like, here, where rent's cheap in Seoul, for, which is great. I mean, it's not, like, Vietnam cheap, but it's cheap. <laughs> um, it's, but uh, the friend there is like, oh, wow, for what I pay, I could get, like, a room for like 12 hours a day like i could do like the night shift or the day shift of the room for like 800 dollars or whatever a month <laughs> God, that sucks. I don't know. well yeah and what you would pay for like i don't know the average price for an apartment in new york or san francisco like you could grand, you could right? get you could get like you could live in like like the kind of apartment that k-pop stars live in here I don't know if it's that. Nice. I know yeah, I'm, I'm uh, yeah. exaggerating. <laughs> I'm, I'm looking at this this newspaper Eric. clipping you sent me, man. It is fucking. That is some outrageous shit. Hitler tamed by prison. New York Times has always been on it, man. <laughs> um, air um, air apartments in New York, I think, would cost like three times what they do here in Seoul. Either of our apartments, maybe more than that. Yeah, I think that's right. Um, so 1933, not a swell year. Things were pretty rough. Although, maybe to make us feel a little better about our current predicament, by 1934, you know, the New Deal was making a lot of headway and like the uh, unemployment percentage was like drastically going down. Things were starting to look up. Hitler was still in power, of course, but, I mean, these are separate issues. Um, 
I don't know. Anything else to say about 1933? We were ignoring Hitler hard at 1933. I mean, other than, you know, having New York Times articles saying, hey, he's reformed now. Well, there's also, there's a, I mean, there's tons of dark history about, like, industrialists, like, were, like, in America, really thought Hitler was great. (laughs) Like, I mean, this stuff is kind of, like, almost so well known i don't know if there's any point talking about it but like major cor- the- major corporations like like coca-cola and like you know so like they invented fanta so they could keep making money by selling well, yeah when coca-cola brought when coca-cola brought crystal coke back to america in the 90s it was based on the formula they used in nazi germany because the nazis didn't want to drink American Coca-Cola, but they wanted to have soda, so they made a clear, a clear soda. <laughs> so Coca-Cola just went and sold Americans okay, Nazi this, soda in the nineties, and that's why it didn't last. This we is knew, deep down inside. We knew, and we didn't buy that shit. This is overall a compelling point, but I have to correct the record. I got to stop a a, a a a corrective tweet. Um, okay, Crystal Pepsi, man. <laughs> There oh, was no was clear Crystal cola. <laughs> <laughs> you're right. Oh, fuck. As you say it, I know you're right. Crystal Pepsi was like a fucking revelation at the time. And it was like, but it was like the dumbest idea in the world in hindsight. They, they had like the biggest um, ad campaign of any soda. I've got the song in my head died. right now. They the had fucking... that like Michael Jackson, like drive by um, video ad campaign. I think it was the first like. The first time a company had put, um, I don't remember a, that a video ads on the side of city buses. Really? Like yeah, and it was like a Van Halen song. They used. That's what I was thinking. I've got the song in my head right now. The song's called "Right Now." Um, yes. yeah, what a time to be alive. They was they that- kind I think they kind of recently brought back Crystal Pepsi as like a dumb like this for nostalgia babies to buy like like a year or two ago maybe. Yeah, I think so too. Um, I also heard people were like selling like ones from the nineties that they kept like on eBay for like exorbitant prices to, to fucking weirdos. Um, was that peak? man? How did we get on Crystal Pepsi? <laughs> Nazis. Was that the peak of consumerism? <laughs> How did we get a Crystal Pepsi? Nazis. Was that the peak of... That was an excellent... <laughs> like, answer and just like your casual answer about Nazism and Crystal Pepsi. Uh, maybe maybe that'll be the, the episode title. Um, casual answer about Nazis and Crystal Pepsi. Um. Yeah, I mean, I don't think we need to get into um, the misery that that Hitler wrought upon Europe. I think people know pretty well. Um, so, also, I, I mean, you're kind of just trying to focus on singular years here, and like, yeah. I mean, Hitler did, of course, a bunch of other things aside from just become the Chancellor of Germany in 1933, but, um. I think we can kind of just move on. Um, yeah, because I'll get myself in trouble saying something dumb like, you know who else did bad things? All the fucking railroad barons in America who brought America to, like, it's Dust Bowl State. But um, you don't see people tarring the legacy of... <sighs> Carnegie. I, I, I mean, know. they were called robber barons, but you're, I mean, <clears throat> you're right. G- generally, like, those names are still respectable for whatever fucking reason. I mean, I'm I guess saying, because they, they can buy respect. <laughs> I'm not saying that you should treat Hitler with any sort of respect. That guy sucked. He was fucking awful. No, I'm but talking... Those guys also sucked. I'm talking about, like, the railroad, like, barons. Yeah, me too. I wish they were all just fucking, like... Um looked at in history as monsters. But I think some of them are still looked at heroes as heroes for whatever the fuck reason. Yeah, like, um, Ford, like, he was a f- total fascist, like, in his he politics. He made the goddamn assembly line. Fuck that. Fuck that shit. <clears throat> he, 
Yeah. But he gave us cars. <laughs> uh, horseless carriages. So then we wind the clock back further. Let's go farther back in time. I mean, like, we could, I mean, of to course. Spain? <laughs> of course you could, like, focus on, on, like, wars and so on. But, I mean, I don't know. Um, the next thing I thought of, at least, was the Spanish flu. Because it's obviously, like, a strong parallel to what's going on now. Like They contained it in the Bay Area. Huh? When the Spanish flu was ravishing the uh, San Francisco Bay Area, the Bay Area did a great job of containing it, and, like, they got infection rates down so much. But the doctors were still warning that maybe it still wasn't time to go out, but then people started to go out. They started to catch the virus. Oh, right. The second yeah. wave was much, much worse. Yeah. 50 million dead worldwide. Oh, I, I I can't, I don't have it right in front of me. The total deaths in the U.S. were, I want to say it was around 600,000, which like, I mean, I hate to say this shit because it's awful, but I think we're going to exceed that. Haven't we already exceeded it? No, we're at like nearly 400 now 400,000 but I mean people are people are I mean even like people even Joe Biden who's trying to restore the soul of the nation and and put people's minds at ease is saying like well there's definitely going to be a 250 more deaths (laughs) uh, 250,000 more deaths like just uh, buckle up folks Um, but I found this uh, I found this little New York Times article about what life was like. There's some oral histories of people that um, lived through the Spanish flu. And a couple of them are, I think, interesting, worth reading. I didn't, I I gotta say, I didn't really know, like, anything about the Spanish flu until this year when it became sort of more um, relevant, I guess. I didn't know much about it other than I knew that it had happened. I didn't realize how, like, how, I guess, big of a thing it was, for better or worse. Yeah, and also that it's its name, the, the same way that, you know, Trump wanted to call COVID the Kung Flu or whatever, like, it did not originate in Spain. I'm still not exactly sure why it that name stuck, but... From everything I've I've read about it, it originated somewhere in like Kansas. Um, but I don't know. Maybe it was just like a sort of propaganda war going on between the U.S. and Europe about who started it. <laughs> <coughs> so, I think the striking thing about some of these quotes is that they sound quite similar to what's going on right now. So. For example, here is a quote from a guy named Clifford Adams from Philadelphia. And um, this was like an interview he did in like the 80s. But um, they were stacked up in the cemetery and they couldn't bury them. I was living on 31st Street then. And that was a two-way street. (laughs) This is such an old man rambling. Okay, I'll keep reading it though. Uh and that was a two way street then, you know. This I'm expecting him to just say like the Abe Simpson and like we wore a we wear an onion on our belt, which is the style at the time. We can't bust heads like we used to, but we have our ways. Oh you, oh, you got it. One trick is to tell them stories that don't go anywhere. Like the time I caught the ferry over to Shelbyville. I needed a new heel for my shoe. So, I decided to go to Morganville, which is what they call Shelbyville in those days. So, I tied an onion to my belt, which was the style at the time. Now, to take the ferry cost a nickel, and in those days, nickels had pictures of bumblebees on them. Give me five bees for a quarter, you'd say. Now, where were we? Oh, yeah. The important thing was that I had an onion on my belt which was a style at the time. They didn't have white onions because of the war. 
The only thing you could get was those big yellow ones. Sorry, this is serious. Be solemn and serious, Josh. Um, is it still stylish to wear onions on your belt? <laughs> yes. Um, maybe I'll insert that funny Simpsons bit here. <laughs> Along with this shit about people dying left and right in the Spanish flu. Okay, he says, but people that died over this way had to be buried over this way, and they used to have a funeral procession coming this way, and they used to be crossing. You had you had to come to this bridge. Maybe this is a bad one to read. <laughs> and you like the okay. The point he's getting at is that like there was no morgue space, which is exactly what's happening all around the United States right now. It's happening in your your home state. It's happened in California. Like, the entire state of California, I believe, has run out of hospital capacity and morgue space. Um, one person here said they were going to a funeral every day. That's depressing. Um... Here, here's one from a coal miner in Kentucky. Nearly every porch, every porch that I'd looked at, would have a casket box sitting on it, and men digging graves just as hard as they could, and the mines had shut down. There wasn't nary a man. There wasn't a, there wasn't a mine a running, a lump of coal, or running to no work. Stayed that way for about six weeks. And it just it gets like more grim details. Um, garages full of caskets. Um, I think the one right under where you're at now with the Philadelphia guy it just it just gets to me for some reason. He's like, "We were the only family saved from the influenza. The rest of the neighbors were all sick. Directly across the street from us, a boy about seven eight years old died, and they used to." Just pick you up and wrap you up in a sheet and put you in a patrol wagon. So the mother and father screaming, let me get a macaroni box. Please, please. Let me put them in the macaroni box. Let me put them in the box. Don't take them away like that. You know, pasta used to come in 20 pound boxes. Please, please. Let me put them in the macaroni box. Let me put him in the box. Don't take them away like that. Yeah, that one's fucking heartbreaking, man. That just yeah, I, that one made my my stomach uh, churn a bit. Um, yeah. So I think it's uh, it's important what you said too, though, about the 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 two waves of it, where like a lot of it was under control, and then people just went out and started partying, basically, thinking it was like all done, and like it came back. 10 times, maybe even more. Um, yeah. So, I also don't know if I'd want to be living in uh, 1918 either. Um, not to mention there was still a, still a war on then, although it was winding down. Um... Yeah, I mean, there's more quotes here. And... Yeah, I mean, it's just it's just old people basically saying, like, all my friends died. It's really, it's depressing. We don't, <laughs> we don't need to read all of I've these. I've known a ton of people... Actually, I haven't known a ton of people to get coronavirus, but every time I call, like, friends and family in the States, which isn't that often, but I do talk to, like, a core group of friends pretty often on Discord, and um, it seems like everyone knows people that has coronavirus, which is kind of crazy to me, because I don't feel like that's the case here in Korea. Well, yeah, because, the like, the cases per capita are, like, n almost nothing. It's like... um. I saw like basically one in one thousand every one thousand Americans 
fuck. I can't remember if it's infected or or has died. It can't be has died. That'd be too many, right? Yeah. Um, but yeah, one in every thousand people in, in a country of basically 330 million people has the virus at this point. Um, it's still actually, we talked about it before, but the U S is still not, um, number one per capita, but that's not, I mean, it's not like, it's not like that makes the news any better. That doesn't make the, you know, it's actually inching now closer to 4,000 people a day dying is what I was reading recently. Um, which is just kind of mind boggling in a way. Um, so yeah, I mean, I guess if if we're on the, the comparison thing here, like more people died from Spanish flu, but like I said, I can see that number being blown away by the time this thing is all over. Um, yeah. Maybe so, any more saying. thoughts on the uh the Spanish flu? Well, I don't know like how cuz I haven't researched it enough. Was there a vaccine for the Spanish flu? Do you vaccinate flus? They they never found a vaccine for it, I don't okay. believe. Um I just know that I was like I reading, actually reading oh. some stuff from doctors in America. Like right now, I guess a vaccination rate for coronavirus is like a million people per week. And at the rate we're going now, it would take 10 years to vaccinate all of America. And we basically need to be doing like um, 3.5 million people a day to get it down to like one year, which would be a much more like uh, beneficial number than 10 years to vaccinate all of America. But then when you and then when you stack that side by side with the infection rate, though, it's like this kind of like. Um, I don't know. It's like your, it's like your house is being flooded, and you're trying to fucking like use a coffee mug to like scoot, like bail the water out. I don't know. I mean, I I could be wrong about that, but like, regardless of any of the stuff I was saying before about vaccines, about how like. <sighs> You know uh, the the pro- the profit motive makes me suspicious and stuff. It's not that I'm. It's not I'm not an anti-vaxxer. People, I'll take all the fucking vaccines right now. But like, it is not the like silver bullet cure all like answer to our prayers that people seem to think it is at, at this point. Like, I mean, just from the th- what you just said about the sheer numbers, like. There's yeah, like the th- numbers we're going right now, which, are, which if you look at how, how great of a job the U.S. has done with testing, it's real easy for people to get tested there, right? Uh, no waiting, no, uh, no being sent away. At the rate we're going now, ten years is like a, uh, the optimist like number. Ten years to vaccinate every American. Yeah, and it needs to be done in a year. And then so we have to figure out a way to hire enough people to give out 3.5 mil vaccinations a day. And then you factor in this new, way more infectious strain that is not, it doesn't look like it's going to be contained to Europe. Um, oh no, it's already like been caught in Busan. Oh really? Damn. Yeah. Oh, I think you told me the other day. I I don't think I told you, but Yane told me today. Oh, okay. Um, it's possible that one of your other friends told you. <laughs> I don't Our really talk podcast. about this shit with anybody else. <laughs> Josh has other friends, and he says he doesn't talk about shit to them, but he does. I know that he talks to other people. I think I swear you told me that someone got it in Korea, but in anyway, who cares? Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, what was I gonna say? Shit, fuck. Shit, fuck. That's what I wanted to say. Um, yeah, I mean, it looks like the way the Spanish flu. I mean, and we're talking about the year nineteen eighteen, but it didn't. It was a, it was declared over by nineteen twenty. So you know, a solid two years of dealing with this thing. 
It infected a third of the world's population, by the way, also. Um, maybe we should move on to the next era. Yeah, let's let's go on to something else. What happened in 1520? <laughs> more <laughs> more lighthearted <laughs> cheery news. Um yes, yeah, so we uh we uh jump in the DeLorean, go to 1520. And this didn't happen all in a single year, but this was like the um I don't know, the, one of the prime years of the smallpox. Like, there have been many smallpox outbreaks throughout history, but this was the one in North America that killed... That's crazy. Sorry, I was looking at your notes, which I had looked at, but I did not read the long paragraph. The, the thing about the guy in China? I just had no clue that uh, the Chinese invented like uh vaccines so fucking early yeah so or like there's there's some vaccines well there's some like there's some sort of maybe hair splitting difference between an inoculation and a vaccine i guess i, I don't really quite understand what just, it is just let me use my layman terms to <laughs> I, just... I think yeah I, I now that you say that i think you're right but um i didn't realize but it seems it seems different. like the same principle as a vaccine though so um yeah, let me read that part. It's I thought it was interesting. Um, so the first clear reference to smallpox, smallpox inoculation was made by the Chinese author Wan. How would you say this name? Quan. Quan. Yeah. Um, don't ask me. On I don't know. If I, he wrote the book <laughs> that, I can't pro- that, that I can't pronounce. That I can't. That I can't pronounce. And um, he wrote about what was being done. Um, I think this guy was actually a uh, pediatrician. Um, anyway, way back in the 10th century um, in China, they would take, this is pretty gross, powdered smallpox scabs and like, it says blow them up the noses of the healthy. And it's like picturing people like snorting rails of this stuff. But, um, <laughs> um, so yeah, the, I mean, the idea was they would get a, you, they would usually get a mild case of the disease and then be immune from it and be able to survive it. And it says that the, this technique had a 0.5 to 2% mortality rate. But that was considerably less than the twenty to thirty percent mortality rate of the disease itself. So I mean, it's kind of a amazing, especially that far back. Um, I mean, there wasn't even like a germ theory of disease yet at that time. Yeah, so, that was, that's incredible. I had no clue that. I, guess, I, guess. I mean, I did. I did pull this directly from Wikipedia, so maybe it's bullshit. But there seem to be a number of secondary no, no, sources. I don't think it is bullshit. I'm just saying for full transparency to our our loyal listeners. <laughs> um, but then, uh, as a lot of people know, um, it it wasn't only smallpox. It was smallpox and influenza and something else that all came from Europe. Um, a lot of like Spanish settlers brought diseases that just wiped out the native populations in North America. And, um, but the smallpox alone is estimated to have killed 60 to 90% of the native population of the whole fucking continent, which is insane. Yeah. You talked, you, you're the one who kind of made me realize that it was worse than I even thought. Um, yeah, I mean, so it, also not people enough. would say that might make like Christopher Columbus like the uh, worst monster in the entire like history of the world or right up there with many of the others yeah I mean he's definitely up there um, if you want to blame him for the smallpox thing I mean if he had had like the technology of the Third Reich I mean he would have probably outdone them you know I mean he was a bloodthirsty fuck who didn't think these people were human you know um 
So another year, not so great to be alive. I mean... Were there ever any good years? <laughs> um, what was the year Crystal Pepsi came out? <laughs> I want to say 1991. I was going to say 91 as well. I'm going to say 93, actually. Out. I'm going to say 93. Should we do a little bet on it? Yeah, sure. Or, I mean, not, well, whatever. <laughs> but what was I'll buy Twin you a Peaks Crystal Pepsi out. if I'm wrong. Because <laughs> Twin Peaks was the last good thing made in this world. Twin Peaks was nine, like 90 and 91, maybe. Yeah. And then the movie came out in 92. 92 to 94. I'm surprised it even was around that long. I thought it like came and went really fast. I think that uh, in 91, I could be wrong about this. I wrote like a, <laughs> I wrote something about Crystal Pepsi once. <laughs> a dissertation. Maybe it was, <laughs> maybe it was 92. Um I mean, it, it 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 is. It is. They, they just did like a big test. I know they've done before it was released like um, across America. They did like a big test run through like a couple of midwestern states. And I guess those midwestern states really liked Crystal Pepsi, and then like they released it because they're like, oh, the midwestern states like it, which is kind of a common thing to like make like a test product. We're like, okay, it's cool in uh, blah 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 Missouri. Guess so. Everyone else in America is going to like it, and I think everyone in America did kind of like it. But then, like, this is going too far into it. There was a whole history of how Coca Cola tried to take down Crystal Pepsi. Really, I didn't. I thought it was like. I thought it was like. My memory of it was like it was this ridiculous novelty. Everyone wanted to try it once, and then like it was just kind of like boring after that that was my personal i mean journey with <laughs> crystal pepsi <laughs> i think that was some of it too there was also like so coca-cola hired an ad guy to basically do as much as he could to take down crystal pepsi and he just started equating crystal pepsi with tab which uh, coca-cola wanted to kill anyways here's what i'm looking at right now is there was a a soft drink coca-cola owned the t- tab yeah they still own tab okay but they made a tab clear yeah and they made it to try to take crystal pepsi they wanted to make something that tasted terrible and get people to associate it with crystal oh pepsi. i'm sorry i didn't understand okay i got it <laughs> this is such a strange <laughs> um Coke bouncing and- back and forth between subjects of <laughs> Coke and Pepsi are a duopoly like the Republicans and the Democrats. And some people could argue that much like the Republicans and Democrats, maybe Coke and Pepsi should be broken up and other soda companies should be given a chance to shine. (laughs) Yes, nationalize the soft drink industry. Break it up. Um, Why does Coke get to own Mel Yellow and Pepsi gets to own Mountain Dew? Shouldn't Mountain Dew be its own company? <laughs> I don't know, man. I want, I want my third party. I want my third party soda to rise to prominence. What's that? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it never gets a chance. The damn duopoly we have, <laughs> where everything is determined by Burger King and McDonald's, or Coke and Pepsi, or Microsoft and Sony. Yeah, it's tough to be an American. It's <laughs> all, all of our choices. Um, so smallpox <laughs> killed a lot of people. Yeah. Um, did you ever have the chicken pox? Yeah, hmm. I never did those. I always thought it was weird. Those like po- like chicken pox parties. Oh yeah, I heard about those. We never did those. I didn't do it either. I was, I mean, I I get the concept. It's like kind of get it over with or whatever. But it's like, or you could just try to never get it because, <laughs> like, I mean, I guess it's not like a super serious disease, but I think sometimes like people can die from like complications mm-hmm. from it. But I don't know. Yeah. Um. 
Yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and say that I would still prefer to live in 2020 than 1520. I mean, the other thing we got to bring in here, of course, is class. We got to have the class analysis on hand because where you know what year would you rather live in well it it also depends on all these other factors right if you're a rich guy like you're probably fine in like any year in in history but if you're say just the common person a peasant and whatnot you know and we're we're sort of the modern equivalent of the peasant class <laughs> um but i think i guess i would rather be that now than in say 1933 or 1918 or 1520 what do you think oh i definitely would yeah i mean it's kind of a dumb question (laughs) it's much easier to entertain yourself now right right we were talking about that right um that's do that's kind of like the major difference is um well also like you know s- there's way less manual labor for the average person and so on um here we get to the to the to the goods um so i just searched for what is considered the worst year in history and i think it's is maybe a handful of historians agree uh, agree on this they say that The single worst year in history was 536 A.D. I'll just... It's crazy. It's a a short article. Um, I'll just go ahead and read it. Sorry, sorry, no. I just remember looking at the notes. I've read about this before, but about the dense fog that stretched across the entire world for like two years. Yeah. It's crazy. Right. Um, I've, I've read about that in a couple of different articles in the past and I've always thought that was like, it's cited multiple places. So I guess it happened. I was like, God, that has to be made up. But then I was like, this is fucking nuts. It's referred to as a mysterious fog here as well. Multiple people talk about it in different like writing from that time. Like there was just this fog that took over the land. And of course they thought it was God punishing them as most people did in those I, days. I mean, well, I was going to say if the next two years we were covered in this like dense fog where I didn't see the sunshine, I would probably think it was something supernatural, but I actually, I'd probably just be like, God damn air pollution. Why is it polluted out here every fucking well, day? The other thing is, well, okay, let me just read it and we'll get to it. Um, so it starts, 2020 has been immortalized. It is a year that nobody will forget. However, when speaking of the worst year recorded in human history, there are many to choose from. Now, some of these we just went over, but I'll quickly go through again. The year 1349 saw the Black Death kill half the population of Europe. No picnic. Uh, 1520, smallpox ravaged the Americas. 1918, Spanish flu killed 50 million people. Hitler rose to power in 1933. Okay, so these are all things I mentioned. However, historians are unanimous in their choice. The title of the worst year in history is easily held by the year 536 A.D., Medieval historian Michael McCormick has stated that it was the beginning of one of the worst periods to be alive, if not the worst year. The year began with an inexplicable dense fog that stretched across the world, which plunged Europe, the Middle East, and parts of Asia into darkness 24 hours a day for nearly two years. That is so apocalyptic. Um, Consequently, global temperatures plummeted, because the sun couldn't fucking break through, which just reminded me of uh, Highlander 2. Isn't that what happens in Highlander 2? I think it is what happens in Highlander 2. Except it's like ozone, it's not a mysterious fog or whatever. It's been a long time since I've seen that movie. I've never seen it, and I still know. (laughs) Sounds right. Um, So, of course, it was the coldest decade in over 2,000 years, which, now I'm not reading from the article, but... Uh, which of course means you can't grow food, which is, you know, what people relied on in those days. You can't, if you can't grow plants, you can't raise animals to 
you know, in turn eat either. So there's no worry of like the world, you know, um, descending into something bad, like, you know, two or three years of me having to wear a mask every day and complain about there being no sun because of air pollution. Right. <laughs> Because we're we're taking care, we're 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 doing the three R's as hard as we can. We're saving the earth. <laughs> recycle, reduce, reuse, recycle. Um, oh, go on. No, no, I'm just like, sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> just thinking of the volcano. Huh? Oh, uh, the, uh, the, that's coming up here. Yeah, yeah sorry. okay. I got ahead of myself. Um, so unfortunately, 536 AD seemed to only be a prelude to further misery. This period of extreme cold and starvation caused economic disaster in Europe. And in 541 AD, an outbreak of bubonic plague further led to the death of nearly 100 million people and almost half of the Byzantine Empire. This part of the 6th century has widely been referred to as the Dark Ages. So this was like the beginning of the Dark Ages, basically, this year. Um, But the true source of this darkness had previously been unknown to scholars. So they figured out what it was. It's not quite as mysterious as people thought it was back then. Uh, Recently, researchers led by McCormick and glaciologist Paul Mayowski... My whatever <laughs> have discovered that a volcanic eruption in Iceland in early 536 led to incredibly large quantities of ash being spread across much of the globe. That's that's some uh, eruption. Jesus, creating the fog that cast the world into darkness. This eruption was so immense that it altered the global climate and adversely affected weather patterns and crop cultivation for years to come. Is that like the top of the Russian they talk about, you know, the nuts talk about what happened when Yellowstone goes up? But the Yellowstone eruption, it's a super volcano. It would just wipe out all of America, right? But I think it would, oh, like, yeah. wrap the rest of the planet in some type of, like, just, like, darkness. Oh, right. I had, uh, <laughs> I guess I had blocked that out of my memory because it's so terrifying to think about. Yeah, there. I mean, there's like several, <laughs> I think several contenders of these like super volcanoes that could do something similar to that. And I mean, even with all of our new fangled technological advancements, do you think we could do anything about it? Even if we could, I don't think we could organize to do anything about it. Yeah. If Maybe I've learned just- anything, if there's a disaster approaching, we're just going to argue. <laughs> I've just pictured like uh like the United States just building the world's largest um like fan <laughs> electric fan <laughs> just blowing all the ash to some other country like not our problem anymore we're going to send a team of fan engineers into the middle of the volcano and actually that just kind of reminded me of that whole um detail in uh uh in infinite jess where like they catapult all the trash over into canada oh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> gotta be able to laugh at all this horrible shit um so yeah 536 it's a, it's a pretty convincing argument for being the worst year at least in you know recorded human history i'm sure they were worse times for, I wouldn't want for, to be alive for, during 536, though. Yeah, I'm going to count that one out as well. <laughs> no, you know, I would have also not wanted to be like a a Native American during the smallpox thing. Yeah, I think so far every every uh, uh, a previous years uh, periods we've looked at, um, I think we are worse than 2020. <laughs> yeah, we'd have to say we'd uh, we'll take keep- 2020. I well, keep thinking of 2020 sort of as like a uh, a prelude of something much worse to come, but maybe that's because I'm more negative than I should be, and I don't believe in this great refresh that the whole world seems to be taking part of. Where they're like, well, it's a new year, so everything's going to be good now. <laughs> so happy that 2020's over. See you, 2020. Don't have to do a bad year ever again. 
Yeah, it's it's really, really, really delusional. Um, it's going to be, at the very least, an interesting time to be alive. I I mean, as much as, much as this year has sucked, um, it's been interesting, for better and for worse, mostly for worse. I don't know. I I mean so many things could happen this, this upcoming year. Um, I'm not feeling optimistic about it. As I've said, um, probably on every episode of the podcast. <laughs> but, oh, I know. I know. Um, but please prove me wrong, Joe Biden and Kamala prove me wrong. I'll eat my words. I'll put them on a plate Get some uh, A one steak sauce, knife and fork. I'll I will eat my computer, which has all of my recorded words on it. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm not I'm not gonna make any bets on that either. Um, there was some other stuff I wanted to get into here too, though. Um, uh, one second, Josh. I want to take a small like uh, break to go to the bathroom. Yeah, go ahead. Um, yeah, the, well, as, as we were getting into like that 536 maybe had created the conditions for the first wave of the bubonic plague to, um, hit Europe, um, which I found out was called the Justinian plague named after the. Emperor of Roman Empire, I believe. <laughs> I think you're right. Um, but then, you know, a few hundred years after that, um, more than a few hundred, but, you know, the Black Death, the 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 the, uh, the all-star set, uh, wave of this bubonic plague, the one most people think of when they think of the plague, from the years 1346 to 1353 is basically how long the whole thing lasted. And um, I would say this seems like actually even a worse time than that 536 in a way. I mean, it basically comes down to, would you rather starve to death with a menacing <laughs> black sky over you for two years or would you rather like have no clue why everyone is dropping like flies around you and you're just like dying from like lesions and shit so i don't know that's uh, it's a toss up there maybe i guess i guess either one of these i could bang coconuts together and pretend i was riding a horse <laughs> when we when i was reading the bit about the spanish flu and they were like you know that fucking heartbreaking thing about like the wrapping the kid up and whatever like yeah, it did just the macaroni box yeah it reminded me of again the bring, bring out your dad yes which we've <laughs> I think we've referenced many times on the podcast mm, now people of a certain age I mean both of us are way too young to actually be the right age to be technically in the Monty Python but at the same time is anyone too young? Is anyone too old for Monty Python? I don't think so. Too old? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> um. Anyway, I don't have anything to say about Monty Python, sorry. I don't uh, really either. I like it. I'll leave it at that. Oh, yeah. I mean, okay, I guess I do. When I saw the Holy Grail one, it was like a revelation as a kid. I was probably like... 10 or 11 and I probably had never laughed that hard ever at anything. Same. Um, yeah. It was Basically great. same. Then I saw the meaning of life. Yeah. That and, one's pretty good too. And I didn't think it was, I didn't think it was as good as Holy Grail. Then I watched the meaning of life later and thought it was much better than the Holy Grail. I'll leave it at that. They're both good. Um, the, Anyway, let's move on. <laughs> I was going to say that vomiting scene is like really hard to watch in the meaning of life. 
Um, I've had that scene play out in my life. <laughs> Just you alone in your apartment. Basically. <laughs> Cramming his entire refrigerator's worth of food into your mouth. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, Black Death... I'd still rather be here in 2020, I gotta say. Um, let me go back further. It's the golden golden era of, uh, say, ancient Greece, in Athens specifically. Um, now, again, this depends on your station in life. If you were, like, one of the fucking... Uh, fancy, fancy lads, little rich boys... <laughs> who could just lie about and philosophize and get drunk all day. Like, not like a terrible... Isaac Newton. T- <laughs> In ancient Greece. <laughs> oh, like... <laughs> like Isaac Plutonium? <laughs> yes, Isaac Socrates, <laughs> the great philosopher... <laughs> Um, then life probably wouldn't be so bad. I mean, those guys, like, had... I think they lived quite, like, long, healthy-ish lives. I mean, things didn't end so great for Socrates, I guess. Um, my point is, is that, yeah, of course, if you had money, like, in the heyday of Athens, like, things would be all right. But I'd still rather live now. I mean, easily. Like, indoor plumbing. I thought Athens invented indoor plumbing. Uh, I mean, it's not as sophisticated as theirs, but I actually think they invented it. <laughs> well, uh, they probably had like outhouse style things, I'm guessing, but I don't, I don't think it, there was like any sort of like pipeline and water, like I water. Know, I think like their bathhouses with the pipes and stuff were actually they were the people that invented like the uh, water pipes, and then it was not used for a very long time after like their empires fell. You're not thinking of the aqueducts in Rome, are you? I probably am. <laughs> in any case... <laughs> I am not great at all this history shit. I had this whole thing about like the daily lives of Athenians, but it's... Um, let's just... Let's fucking forget that. <laughs> <laughs> like, So, like, the broader point about all of this, I think, is that... I mean... Context is everything, right? Like, people are saying worst year ever, and people have been saying worst year ever for, you know, since at least 2001, probably. I don't know. And while in a lot of ways, yes, things are fucked up. I mean, see every podcast episode we've made. We go on about it quite a bit. But I don't know. And I'm not also, I'm also not trying to say like, everyone should just be appreciative that we don't have smallpox and stuff, but it is something to consider when you're like bemoaning like the state of the world, like, like, oh, you're right. I think things like human history is just like, it's this kind of incremental, like line of of like terrible suffering all leading to like things getting like a little better here and there and then it all kind of adds up to like where we are in the present if that makes any sense no it does i was gonna say i think things actually i think a lot of things are getting better it just gets frustrating sometimes because I think a lot of it has to do with information that is readily available now, and it's really easy to like kind of monitor what's going on, unlike any other time in history. Yeah. So it just is really disheartening when like there seems to be really e- not even easy fixes, but hard fixes that just aren't being like even attempted or tried because people are like stuck in their ways or just like only worried about profit motive or benefiting themselves and not about like helping the whole. But yeah, the the world's definitely a better place now than it was even 20 years ago. Yeah. And in, in I mean, I, you could find in some ways in which it, it, certain aspects where it has gotten objectively worse, like say like income inequality is probably worse now than it was 20 years ago. I mean, I know it I know it is, but um but yeah, on on the whole. And and the other thing is is like so 
I don't know. Do you, do you know Steven Pinker? Yes. No, Not I know a lot. Of, yeah. Um, I mean, I had I had my phase of like enjoying his stuff, like probably I don't know ten more than that years ago. Um, and he wrote this book, I think, kind of more recently called like the I forget what it's called, but the whole the whole point purpose of the book was to show how things have improved like throughout human history and that a lot of times people kind of narrowly focus on the bad things in the moment um and i don't know like there's there's like critiques of his book and stuff but my point is that i'm not really trying to to either i'm not really trying to say that either i'm not trying to dismiss the pro- current problems but i just think it's worth thinking about how much worse things could be sometimes because i mean if 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 at the very least it's like a coping mechanism even if it's <clears throat> i don't know people need fucking coping mechanisms in a way and like to me that one's like not too delusional because things could always be worse like that's just a fact um i don't know i'm kind of getting lost in my own thoughts own here but thoughts, yeah um before we before we cut this though like um i also thought it could be interesting to look at this um one of my favorite wikipedia articles which is a um there are various timelines of the future um, that try to sort of predict what's going to happen on like um, on like the human scale, but then like it goes on like this like uh, far future timeline, and it's mostly just like incredible like uh, cos- cosmological, sorry, astronomical events. Um, and when you read it and it has like this casual tone of like, here, I'll try to find a good example. Okay. <laughs> here's, here's just the timeline on humanity. Um, 10,000 years from now is the most probable estimated lifespan of technological civilization. Um, Humanity has a 95% probability of being extinct in 10,000 years. I actually, when I saw that number, I thought it kind of thought like, that's wishful thinking. <laughs> but, you don't think we can make it 10,000 years? I don't know, man. <laughs> We've already made it 10,000 years. We can make it another 10,000 years. Yeah, but we didn't have like stuff that could blow up the world until pretty recently either. But, um, it's true. And it goes on to say that, like, you know, maybe we could colonize other planets. Um, the other interesting thing is it says that, like, we'll be, like, basically physically unrecognizable, I think. Um, I don't know if that's true or not, but maybe. No, that doesn't, that seems too, that's too short of an amount of time to, like, evolve that dramatically anyway on what we uh, do with technology by that point maybe we're all just part of the singularity by then yeah this so. this um this um article doesn't uh, take into account all this all the singularity theory stuff um but like when it gets into like the really distant future stuff it just it gets kind of um yeah i mean point is is that it all is leading towards our podcast the heat death of the universe so <laughs> maybe this wasn't as fun as i thought it would be this future thing <laughs> um, i'm sorry i mean we can barely we can barely put any confidence in what we think is going to happen in the next year i mean so some of the future stuff um i feel like the Earth Remembrance books do a really good um, 
I'm kind of talking about the the, the third body the, problem. Yeah, the Luzes in books, and he like each of those books are set almost like <sighs> I don't remember the exact dates, but they're all like almost five hundred to a thousand years apart from each other, and they're all about like humanity's first contact with aliens, humanity building civilizations, and all, and then eventually it gets to the end of humanity. And it sounds cool. Um, and it is interesting stuff about how much we change and how little we change too. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, I really should check that one out. Language gets really weird, but also less weird, I guess. Do we all speak Esperanto? <laughs> yeah, we should. That's a dumb joke. What was the deal? What was the deal with Esperanto? Um, yeah, I don't know. 2020. <laughs> I keep hoping the future will be better than the past. Also, I don't actually want a singularity to happen, but I always like to joke about it happening. I guess I don't really care if it happens, though. If we're all, <laughs> if we're all subsumed by some, like, super intelligent network, so be it. I mean, I would like to extend my my life, um, but I when I've thought about the idea of, like, uploading my consciousness into some sort of uh don't worry computer AWS servers <laughs> it sounds like it could be like a hellish hellish existence that you can't escape from you know what i mean like you'd just be like this trapped consciousness that's like also not even fully you i don't know i can imagine like just nightmare scenarios with that kind of shit but um if they yeah, get, but too. if but if they build, if they get all the nanobots that can like just like go into my body and like take out all the diseases and shit, I'd be down with that. And they put a timer on your body, like in that dumb Justin Timberlake oh, movie. Man. I think it was Justin Timberlake movie. What was it called like, Out of Time or something? Where if you don't have enough money, you can't afford to live any longer. That we should do a movie episode on that one. I, I actually never watched that movie but i've seen clips from it i love the concept i, I, went, hear, it's, I hear it's really bad like I think it concept, is bad but like the concept time, is interesting every time i hear the concept it's like oh this sounds great it's like an anti-capitalist uh with what the premise to me just sounds like it's uh wow rich people suck <laughs> I I was one of those like plane movies for me when I was on like the long flight from US back to Korea and or, or maybe vice versa but um it was one of those plane movies that was like I was just like in and out of consciousness and kind of being like oh this sucks <laughs> but it could be funny to like just do like a short episode on or something I don't know sure we'll think about it um well, 2020's dead and gone, and, uh... Can't wait for 2021 when we do the 2021 primaries and the 2021 election. <laughs> yeah, what if <laughs> what if it was just, like, this nightmarish, like, eternal recurrence repeat of 2020? When the Republicans get enough vote in Congress to uh, impeach Joe Biden... <laughs> Who's gonna be the Who's gonna be the clapback Pelosi though to like tear up Biden's speech behind him? I guess it would be Mitch McConnell, right? Be Mitch, yeah. <laughs> Just picture him doing some like bitchy move like that. That'd be kind of funny. Oh man! Well, listen here, Jack. <laughs> you, don't to, you don't even have to don't even have to say anything after it anymore. It's just. Listen here, Jack. Even just listen here. <laughs> um, I get older, and all the people leading me are also getting older. I thought at some point, like, as I was getting older, it was supposed to equal out to where the people in charge were also my age, but that hasn't happened yet. You know, the I've, I've been thinking about this a bunch of times, but forgot to mention it to you, also because it's, it's going to make us a little bit bummed out. But um, you said that you thought AOC was basically our age. She is definitely not. She's, she's like, like thir- twenty thir- years younger than us. She's thirty-one. That's not that much younger than us. Well, 
I mean, it's not 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 significant. I'm so, okay. Well, what, what you said, I thought you meant like like a year, like a no, year no, difference. No, I thought or that something. she was like thirty-one. I I. Th- I, well, anyway, when she's... When you said that, I just thought you were going to say she was like 26 or something. It's like, oh, God. Well, okay, so I think she was like 29 or 28 when she got elected, though. Mm. Something like that. In any case, she, she is the outlier. Yeah, I mean, most of the people in power are just... It's because they all, they've all got that fucking adrenochrome, man. They can just keep living for fucking ever. Um, it's not like it's hard manual labor they're doing. <laughs> that, too. And, like, every member of, like, the House and the Senate is, like, at least a millionaire, something like that, or, like, the vast majority. It's really quite gross. But, um, I feel like we should probably wrap it up here. Okay. Okay, so my recommendation, because uh, I didn't spend a lot of time thinking about it, and I do know that January 1st, and it is January 1st in South Korea at the moment for at least another hour or so, is uh, Ichiro Oda's birthday, who is the creator of One Piece, which is uh, maybe the greatest uh, manga slash anime ever made. Uh, If you don't think so, it's because you haven't explored all of it which I'm coming to realize as I go through my exploration of One Piece recently after years of being like I don't understand why it's the most popular manga ever made it's cool it's got some really great world building like some of the most interesting just fun world building I've seen and I I recommend it as just another great way to escape this terrible reality (laughs) that we find ourselves in go on a pirating adventure Yes, do what people could not do in the Great Depression or the smallpox outbreak and all those things we talked about. Just glue your mind to a device and and push off. <laughs> but um, the artist of One Piece, which I know very little about, H.R. Otis, seems like a really cool guy. And I think One Piece is actually just incredible the more I read slash watch it. So... That's my recommendation. Being that it's the most popular anime slash manga ever made, uh, internationally at least, I don't know if it's like that helpful of a recommendation. No, I'm sure some people. I I honestly never hadn't heard about it until like Tommy yeah. was obsessed with it. Um, I had heard about it and we, yeah put it off forever. I'm not really in that world, I guess, so to speak. And my recommendation now is going to be more proof of that because (laughs) I'm going to recommend a cool, hip A24 movie that only I've seen. Actually, it's very, very popular. It's called Midsummer, And I feel almost kind of dumb. You've never recommended that? I recommended his short films before. Right, right. Um, (laughs) But specifically, the director's cut, um, it's... It's not, like, hugely different. There's actually only one completely uh, standalone scene added. But the rest is, like, just, like, a minute or two here and there. Um, A lot of it is, like, the relationship shit going on between... um, What's his name? Christian, the boyfriend, and um, Florence Pugh. I can't remember her character's name for some reason. Danny, um, I really, 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 really loved Midsummer. I really, really, really loved Hereditary. Um, I'm extremely impressed by Ari Aster. I'll see like anything he does from now on. Um, <clears throat> people who <laughs> it, I, it blows my mind that some people don't like um, Midsummer, but I don't know. I guess it's also not that surprising. Uh, Midsummer's incredible. 
Yeah, I, I mean, actually it, think I like Midsummer more than Hereditary. I, I think like Hereditary a lot, but I like Midsummer more personally. Push comes to shove, I would probably agree with you because it's it's <laughs> Hereditary still, and I've rewatched it a number of times. It's still just like it's a very tense movie to watch, and Midsummer, while it is fucked up and tense in its own ways, is. Maybe it's just the color palette difference, you know? It's like this colorful nightmare. Um, but um, anyway, like, I, I think he, he's going to keep making great movies. And it's amazing that his first movie was, like, the caliber that Hereditary was. And, um, yeah, so I recommend watching the director's cut and just watching everything he's done which is just two movies and then the short films that i recommended in the past um also recommend finding some interviews with him on youtube he's actually a really like kind of funny well-spoken guy and um interesting to listen to talk about film so there's that and that's the end <laughs> no it's not god damn it every time i'm gonna do this what do we do before we end the podcast? We, we plug ourselves. Again. We come to you once again to mention that. Well, with the inauguration coming up, you can go to Joe Biden's website to buy <laughs> Joe Biden gear. His Twitter, if nothing else, has made it very apparent that there's not a crisis going on in the world. This is the perfect time to buy your Joe Biden trucker hat. This or, is... you know... You could visit heatdeathpod.com and leave us a comment. Or you could go to Reddit and say, hey, we bought a fucking trucking hat. What's wrong with buying a trucker hat, you motherfuckers? But, or email oh. or send us um, stories, interesting stories you might want to share or have read aloud on the podcast. Uh, thoughts, complaints anything <laughs> we sound so desperate <laughs> but no we just want to hear from people um we just want human human contact i mean our downloads are going up worms. so come on people we know some of you are listening presumably um anyway let us know if you listen to us at two times speed or 0.5 speed <laughs> yeah yeah if you would, listen to us at 0.5 speed i do wonder <laughs> You're a fucking masochist then. <laughs> it would be like 17 hour average <laughs> runtime. Um what was I gonna say? Oh, and Twitter is just at heat heat death pod as well. Um now that's truly it. Uh let's hope this is a happy new year. Fingers crossed. Things are always getting better incrementally. And please do not buy Biden inaugural gear or, oh, yeah, or no, we will just, we will shun you forever. I just I just <laughs> wanted to talk about how much I fucking hate that. No, that made me want to throw up when I saw that. Okay. So should we quit there? Yeah, I'm gonna hit stop in okay. three, two, one, goodbye.
The first voice recording was made in 1860. It was a 10-second fragment of the French folk song Au Claire de la Lune recorded by inventor Edward Leon Scott de Martinville. But who will make the final voice recording and when? What will it be? Who will hear it?